Racial harassment in Britain is not new. As long ago as the 12th century, hostility and attacks have been a common experience for different cultures settling in this country. Hackney has always been a multiracial borough, and now nearly half of the community who live here are members of black and ethnic minorities. Last year, 1,937 incidents of racial harassment were reported to the police, with many more going unreported. The fight against racial harassment is a major part of the borough's policy for better housing and services. All who live here have the right to equality, fairness and justice. quite happy they were not quite happy because my children cannot play it outside and someone you know trouble to them so not happy when I put uh, in my garden and my neighbor you know tearing eye and watching you know and uh, you know something shouting to my children so don't want to not happy in the play in the garden always I'm keeping in my house like I'm living like I'm prisoner, you know, my family. So I'm not happy on this place. Towards midnight, the same night, 20th of May, 1985, they ripped up my car. They managed to get into the car, ripped it up, and uh, put the seats on top of the roof. So, they were pushing us because the doorway was not enough for all of them to come. They were pushing us and we were pushing. In the meantime, my son, who woke up, rang the police. We keep on screaming and shouting. One of the men tried to put his hand to my mouth. And the last one, I think, had a knife because it struck me over my shoulder here and a little scar on my ears, which started bleeding slightly. In the dark, all you saw was a mass of youths. You know there's a gang that lives on this estate and that the neighbour below has a son that roams with the gang. They seem to think it's heroic to put someone through this. It all seemed to start a few months ago when a woman along the landing started calling you names. It hurt you deep as she was not only abusing you but your race, culture and whole being. Yesterday, there was another attack. You were pushed down an unlit stairwell. Even though you screamed, no one came except your wife. She went to ring the police. A phone box was nowhere to be found. She tried knocking on a neighbor's door for help, but they wouldn't open the door. The fear you and your family feel is so immense that you make sure no one goes out in the dark. You've been to the police, but they wanted evidence, witnesses. None of your neighbours will come forward to help. Evidence. Even the council want evidence. The community on the state want evidence. How can you convince the police, the council, the tenants association, the hospital, that the fear you feel is the very evidence you have? You're trapped in your own home, locked, sealed and mostly forgotten. It seems that your experience has been dismissed as a quarrel between neighbours or just children playing pranks. look this man give already uh, warning so give me protection her husband coming on my door he say something tell me I can't understand then I go uh, my friend took me home and when I come out the, uh, in the car and uh, this man waiting for me 
and when I come out the garden, uh, the, in the car, and two, three points drop on my face, and I fell down on the ground. And a friend of mine took me again in police station, give report. And policeman said to me, if again beat you, I arrest him. A few years ago, the police didn't really recognize the concept of racial harassment at all. As far as they were concerned, a crime was a crime was a crime. More recently, they've had instructions from the Home Office to take this sort of thing more seriously. I think they've been forced to by events and by public pressure. In Hackney, we have an enormous crime rate, um, and it really is a terrible problem for us to be able to cope with all of the crime. But when someone reports uh, a crime, or indeed an incident, where we think there's some racial motivation, we give that an immediate priority. Um, if it's a crime, then it will be investigated on all occasions by a CID officer supervised by a detective inspector. And whether it's a crime or not a crime, um, it will still be um, the subject of follow-up visits by a home beat officer. We encourage people to take court action out and to report cases to the police. Not because we think that the police will do anything about the cases, but because we need um, the statistical evidence when we actually ask for changes, for people to say that, you know, we've had so many reported um, cases of racial harassment, the police will have that information. People will go to court and court will rule in various ways. And at the end of the day, we're able to use that information to press for changes. Between 1978 and 1980, the Commission for Racial Equality investigated Hackney Council's housing department and found that there was racial discrimination in the allocation of council housing. The report was published in 1983, and both this and mounting pressure from the community led the council to accept that the old policy on racial harassment did not work. The council realized that changes would have to be made. We decided, first of all, to involve the black community right from the start in finding out what was the problem we were actually dealing with and how they viewed the best methods of dealing with it. And as a result of setting up a working party, various proposals were put forward and consulted widely before they were taken on by the council as policies. When we were looking at racial harassment, we were saying that the victims should be the priority the victim should be the people who wasn't going to suffer any further detriment and that the people who were actually perpetuating racial harassment were the people who should be moved rather than what was done previous in the past where they were moving people from his off estates. Historically we tended to see racial harassment as really part of a general problem of harassment. I mean, There is always harassment between tenants, there are always arguments about dogs, about noise, about abuse. And we've always in the past thought, well, racial harassment is simply one part of that. The new thing about our approach in recent years has been to recognize that racial harassment is quite a distinct order of harassment. It's part of the general problem of racism in our society and in our borough. They refused to accept my pleas to be good neighbors and friends and said to me, do whatever you think you can do. Don't you know what, where to go to? You go to the council and see if they can help you, if you can't take it. Or please yourself, but don't, come, don't ever come here to disturb us again. 
That's what it said to me. Because I made two approaches on the, in October 1983 and December 83. Then after that, I, I had to write. Uh, I complained, and that was in January, February 1984. I wrote to the council, to the estate office, about the uh, harassment. And it carried on from there. My problem was that it should be solved then and there. But the council's letting officers, the housing officers, the state officer have to go by some rules. Now, rules have become a bit more stronger than the human needs. What I like, and I like to contribute, that rules are to be flexible, that when there is a need, people should be helped above and beyond the rules. We need a number of things to happen. I think one of the most important challenges facing us in our housing services is to redress the imbalance in terms of the workers, offices, manual craftspeople working in housing services so that they truly reflect the population of the, or the borough. You're an Asian tenant living on the third floor in a block of flats. It is an old estate and suffers from a number of structural problems, one of the major ones being penetrating damp. You have three young children and your wife has been taken to hospital recently, suffering from high blood pressure. A symptom, doctors say, is due to the high level of stress the family is living in. For the past two years since you moved in these flats, you have been a target of all sorts of attacks, knocking on doors, throwing of excretia through the letterbox, throwing fireworks during November, throwing stones and bullying your children when they played outside. Your window panes have been broken about five times and each time you have reported it to the housing department. Only three times have they been repaired. You've had to put up your own boards and had to wait a long time before the windows were mended. You know who's doing this to you and your family. It is a family living a floor below you and you feel you cannot say anything because no one will believe you. You want to move and have filled in a transfer form. You feel reluctant to talk to any person about your suffering unless they are a member of your community. You have gone to the estate office to report a repair to a window. It was broken for the sixth time. You feel reluctant to ask about your transfer application because the housing officer might not understand or be sympathetic to your problem. Tenants won't come into the department and say they're being racially harassed. They will come into the department to report a broken window pane or wanting a transfer or reporting repairs. Now they might have come to the department five times, this might be their fifth visit and if the officer isn't sensitive enough to pick that information and question the tenant, that racial harassment case will not be on, on our forms at all. So what we're trying to do is try and train officers to become more sensitive so that they can extract information from tenants themselves by asking the right questions. It's drawing out the information from the victim. How, how, how did your window break? Um, who's doing it? And with that, the information will come out. They need to look out. Um, they need to go and patrol or go around for a walk around their estates and see where there's, there's racist graffiti. They need to go into their youth clubs as well and see how they're functioning, whether they're black children actually or black youth using those facilities. They need to actually know about how their tenants associations are functioning, whether there are representatives from the black and ethnic minority communities in the tenants association. So there are a whole series of things that an officer can do to become sensitive to the whole issue of racial harassment. We have moved into a situation where we are going to appoint 32 specialist officers funded by, partly by Hackney, partly by central government. And they will be based, these 32 officers will be based at each of our area bases. So each of our own area base, housing area bases, will have a special officer, specialist officer available to advise our other officers there, to interview and support any of our local residents who feel that they have been victims of 
racial harassment. And in doing that work, we'll be able to sharpen our policy so that we do not just have policies that are statements, but we have policies which we are implementing and which we can then, with experience, know how to word the policies. A lot of people feel that training is going to solve everything. You train the officers, they'll become sensitive and they will actually provide a service. That is, that is just one aspect of a whole series of changes that we need to make. We need to change um, are very thinking about delivering a service. We need to change um, the way we make decisions without consulting groups, black groups. Uh, we need to become really anti-racist. The major elements of our new policy in dealing with racial harassment are first to recognise that racial harassment is a, is a distinct offence in itself and that will be part of the tenancy agreement that we take on as a landlord with all council tenants. We will examine very carefully uh, circumstances where people are found guilty of racial harassment and we may decide to treat them as intentionally homeless. The second thing we have to put over is that we will help the victims of racial harassment. We will give them legal support and counselling and advice and again bring in community organisations to support them. We will not be unsympathetic to their predicament and we will give them all the necessary advice and support that we can. We will be seeking to positively promote a policy of anti-racism and opposition to racial harassment to encourage people to see the positive reasons why it needs to be combated and we'll be instituting training programs within the council departments that deal with instances of racial harassment not just the housing department but the building division who have to clear up the graffiti and so on to make them aware of the problem and create the sympathetic supportive climate where people feel able to report those attacks and we'll be carefully monitoring instances of racial harassment and collecting the statistics and seeking to build up a comprehensive picture of the problem. The council is committed to stamping out racial harassment and will investigate all cases of racial harassment within 24 hours. Pursue those guilty and evict them. Erase graffiti and repair damages within 24 hours. Charge the cost of repairs to those responsible. Ensure that the police take action against perpetrators. Offer victims accommodation if their safety is at risk. Offer victims support and legal help. We don't claim we wouldn't pretend that we can solve that problem overnight or that we can solve that problem on our own. We are seeking to ally ourselves with everyone in the community who recognises that we have to find ways of living together and that if we live in a society where we turn on each other, we will never solve the very real problems that beset all of us. And we want to encourage people to think about our policies in a positive light. All we're asking is for people to live together in fairness and justice. That's all we're asking and that's all our policies are ever out to promote.